Welcome back, YouTube. Sorry I took a little bit of a break on you, uh, but today the topic at hand is how to get a perfect color match every single time. And the answer to that question is you can't. <laughs> but I'm gonna go through some things that you can do, uh, especially if you're in a professional environment like I am in a spray booth, you're just new to this field. The best thing, the best advice anybody ever gave me was make your spray out cards. So these are spray out cards. These are metal. Uh, so you can store them, you label them, and you can use them as reference for later. This color is Honda BG62M, which is called like Sky Breeze or, no, Mountain Air. That's what it's called. It's called Mountain Air. It's like a kind of a teal. Not my favorite color. Uh, but the situation that I had was that my little chip deck, the, the spray out or the, the chip for this color matched great. I sprayed it on this card to double check before I sprayed anything in here and it didn't match my chip deck. So what I ended up having to do was spray a couple of the alternates or field variants that they call them in Sherwin-Williams. I landed on this, which is called Cleaner Greener or Field B. I also did a, a computer generated that didn't really, that looked more like the standard that didn't match. Uh, but this Cleaner Greener was the ticket as far as a blendable match. And really as painters, that's what we're after. We're after being able to blend our color and make our color seem seamless. Uh, so today what I'm gonna go through is basically when you should blend, uh, how to blend waterborne base coats. It's kind of the same with solvent borne, but a lot of the steps are different. I know there's other videos on YouTube that uh, explain how to do solvent base coat blends. Go search those. This is going to be on Ultra 9K Water. Uh, I've got a bunch of new parts. I'm not gonna really focus on spraying the new parts. I'm primarily going to focus this video on our blend fenders or our blend fender, blend door, blend rails, and show you how I handle difficult colors. Because this color is not 100% perfect. And I'll bring you in and show you that this isn't perfect, but I'll show you how you can make this look perfect by blending. All right, just to start this off, when I'm color matching, typically <clears throat> I'm going to be checking against the panels that I already plan to blend, or if I'm trying to panel paint something, which isn't very often, I will check against where it's going to butt up to check for my color. Now this, I'm painting on both sides, so I was checking it side to side to side. Couldn't find anything that was 100% for both sides, because I have a feeling that that side is slightly different than this side. It happens sometimes when a car's been repaired before, even some factory cars that can happen. Um, but I did end up with this variant that is slightly different. I'm gonna bring you guys in a little closer and show you what I'm working with. I know on the camera it's gonna be hard for you to tell, but for the sake of this video, I will show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna just show you compared to this rail here. Uh, what I have is just, this is BMP Nampha. I use it to check color, but basically I'm gonna spray it there just to act as like a gloss simulator. Now hold this up. You can see that this is slightly different, okay? It's not perfect, but However, when I put my light on it, it's, it's pretty close. And I know, here, let's turn this down. It's pretty close with a light. Now the effect that you're seeing is called metamerism. When color bends at different angles, it changes the way it looks. So that's already fighting against us. Um, but in order to get a decent blend when it comes to metallics, my biggest concern is going to be the side tone, okay? Now, I don't know, I'm trying to look at the camera and do this at the same time. I don't know if you guys can tell, but my face and side tone are close enough to where it's not going to stand out if I blend this color. Now, getting to a blendable match is honestly, with some of these colors, is the hardest part. Now, I like to stay, I don't know, I would, I would call it 10 to 15% difference between what I'm about to spray and what I'm blending into. I want it to be as close as possible. In this situation where it's, it's a pretty rough color, 
My biggest concern is going to be this side tone. So it's gonna be the tone looking down across the, the color. I want that to match because at the end of the day, when you're looking across this car, if you can see the blend, it was because the side tone was different. The face tends to blend a heck of a lot easier than the side tone. So when you guys are color matching silver, really pay attention to that side tone. And that's, that's really taking a color match light Instead of just looking at it like this and saying, oh yeah, that looks good, tip it. Okay, so that's when the sun is aiming down on it. That's called your side tone. That's gonna be a tell-all. If it's lighter or darker than your panel that you're about to blend, it's going to be a big pain in the butt to get that color to properly blend to where you can't see it and you don't see some kind of really ugly fade. So since I'm happy with the side tone of this color, we're gonna run with this, and I'll show you how I go about blending. I had mentioned that we're replacing this fender. I'm blending that fender, blending this quarter panel. The reason I'm blending the quarter panel, this is a customer's car, it's insurance work, so we get paid to do this. But I'm gonna blend my color up this rail so it matches the new fender that's here, as well as on this door so it matches the new fender. When you go to clear, some people will burn in up here. That's just, that's adding a failure point. I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to burn. I'm going to re-clear this entire panel and that'll lock down everything and I, I can warranty it, good to go. So I'm going to go ahead, get all this stuff cleaned up, wax and grease remover, blow it all off, tack rag it, seal my new parts, and that'll bring you guys in when I actually come to blend this color out and show you how I do it with water. The process is very similar in solvent. So a lot of the, the tips that I'll show you, you can use in solvent. It's just the spraying technique is going to be a little bit different. All right, side note about picking color that's already in formulation versus tinting. I would much rather be able to pick something that already has a formula, blend my color, than sit in here with all of my toners, tint, make cards, spend hours and hours doing that, wasting a lot of time and pain simply because I can replicate this. I have a formula that I will stick on the back of this. I know that it's already in the computer. If this car is ever hit again, I know what formula I can blend out and it's going to match. I can easily repair this vehicle again versus if I just come in here and start adding toners to my mix. So anyway, I'll bring you back when I'm about to blend all this. All right guys, so the first step that I'm going to take as kind of a preventative measure is I'm going to spray sealer on both of these edges and that kind of starts my blend. Um, and the reason that I'm going to do that is if you start with your ground color, which is your sealer, you're, you're already going to be ahead of the game because you can guarantee that at least your edge, where your new, new part is going to butt up to, was sprayed in the same way and is at least going to be the same color. This also helps to start that color into its own transition of the old color that's on the vehicle. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the edges. I have a little mini gun sitting on the hood right now that I'm gonna to use to melt the edge. Basically just softens my sealer edge. So when I spray base over it, I'm not going to have any kind of line there. So let's go ahead and do that. It's not gonna take much. That's it just on the end. And if you noticed, I pointed the gun away from the end of my blend. I don't want any of this overspray to land down here. I want it to all stay at the front. So now let's melt that edge. And this is just slow reducer. This works on sealer, urethane sealer like this. It works on epoxy as well. Just get a hot temperature or a slow reducer. And right as that's wet, just spray it over. Like that. Same thing. It is just straight reducer. A lot of people kind of trip out that I'm just spraying reducer on this edge. I promise you that it works. It softens this edge right here and just helps to smooth it out. You don't want to spray it super heavy because then you're going to end up running the edge of your sealer, but just a nice light coat. It'll evaporate off. It's not going to cause you any problems in the future. It's just going to sit here and evaporate and slowly melt that for us. So 
I'm gonna go mix up color and I'll bring you guys back when we're ready, when we're ready to start these blends. All right guys, so now that our sealer is dried, we're ready to start our blends. Like I had mentioned, this color is far from perfect, so we're gonna try our best to keep our color blend tight. So I'm barely going to pass this sealer. I'm gonna probably end up somewhere right in here. So uh, we'll make sure we get this all tacked off and clean. Okay, so the first step in this whole deal is this clear stuff. This is called base coat blender or base additive or binder or wet bed. What this is going to do is, wet bed's probably the best description of this, but it's going to give all of my metallics and pearls something wet to land in as I make my blend. So it helps to make this seamless. What can happen if you don't use this? Those metallics go in the air, they land on the end of your blend. You can tack the end of your blend and you would still have some metallics that get stuck there and they're standing up. When you go to clear that, it turns into protrusion. So it'll look like sand in the end of your blend. This kind of eliminates that and helps you to really see what you're doing. So we're going to use it, but I'm gonna do one wet coat. I'll grab my color and I'll start blending. I'm gonna do wet on wet. So what that means is I'm going to start my blend tight. My second coat, I'm gonna go a little bit further. Then I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna let that dehydrate. Then I'll come back and we'll control coat it as long as everything looks good. If I have to do a third step out, we will, but we'll see what it looks like. I know this looks blue. I promise you it dries completely clear. That's another difficulty with waterborne base coat. Uh, when it's wet, it looks totally different than when it's dry. So my blend isn't going to look great right off the bat. I'm gonna pre-warn you about that. You're going to see it when it's dry and flashed off. That's when we'll care what it looks like. All right, got my color loaded up. Let's go ahead and start it. Okay. All right, there we go. That's done. All right. So that's my initial blend started. As you can see, I went wet on wet. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I'm right about in here. It looks a little bit blotchy at the top. That could go away once it dehydrates. Uh, we're going to just let this dry and then we'll make our assessment. So when this is fully dehydrated, I'll bring you guys in a little bit closer so you can see if we can see our blend or not. I'm hoping not. If we still can, I have a couple of little tricks to kind of get it to smooth out so we don't have a fade instead of a blend. All right, so I took my little blower. This is just the fan jet blower from Walcom. Dehydrated all of this. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, right about in here is where my blend ends. And in person, this is a little bit blotchy, but I know it's covered because I can't see the gray sealer. And honestly, I think once I control coat this, I'm going to be 100% happy with this blend. Um, I was right in picking the variant that I did because I'm looking at the side tone and the side tone on this color is pretty dark. So all the way across this, I can't see any difference in side tone. Like I had mentioned, the face can be, you know, 10 to 15% different. It's all gonna be in that side tone or the flop. So now that I'm pretty happy with this, all I really need to do now is re-wet bed all of my blend area up until right about probably in here. So I'm gonna take my control coat just a little bit past where my last coverage coat was. Uh, if you're new to waterborne, your control coat will not fix 
everything, but if you have a little tiny bit of blotchiness, model, as some people call it, it'll smooth that out, as long as you take your time with your control coat. You can't come in here and just quickly control coat this and think that that's good enough. You need to back off the panel and slowly just set all your metallics, make your final blend, and then let that fully dehydrate. Uh, another thing to note with Waterborne, make sure to give this at least 15 to 20 minutes at 70 to 80 degrees before you clear it. If you clear this too soon, you could introduce all kinds of problems. A, your clear is not gonna stick very well, and B, you can lift metallics off the surface and actually create more model or blotches. So I'm gonna go ahead, re-wet bet this, and we'll make our control coat, and then I'm actually gonna just let this sit for about 20 minutes before I go mix clear. All right guys, like I mentioned, I'm just gonna re-base coat blend the end of this blend and then up my rail and we'll control coat it and that's blend's done. I've done the exact same thing on the other side. I just figured we'd focus on one side so it was easier for you to follow along. But uh, this is the last coat of blender, last coat of base, and then we'll wait about 20 minutes and then we're ready to clear. So let's go ahead and get this done. All right, that's blender. Now I've got my color. And typically when you're doing a control coat, you wanna drop your PSI two to three pounds. It's just going to allow uh, these metallics to lay down just a little bit smoother. So I did drop this about two PSI. We're gonna go ahead, lay all these metallics out, and that'll be it. About a foot away from the panel is all you need, so right about there and just a tight overlap and just wash it all smooth out. Like that. Looks pretty good. All right. So that's blend done. I will show you this after it's all dehydrated. I mentioned before that there is going to be kind of a line right here. And that's just because base coat blender tends to be a lot shinier than your actual base coat. So yeah, you'll see the difference in that. But in person, I promise you, and once this is cleared, you'll see that this transition is as seamless as I can humanly make it. It's not perfect, but it's about as close as I can get. All right guys, so it's really tight quarters in here. I can't really back up and show you this whole blend. But uh, this is the final product on the door, on this rail. I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys back up and we'll get this job cleared and move on to the next one. All right guys, now that I'm happy with that blend, it's just time to clear this. Um, I am gonna tack rag just to be safe since I did wait about a half an hour before I went and cleared this. I went and did some other stuff in the shop. So I will tack it off and get this job knocked out. I'm gonna do two coats of clear and my spray gun of choice, as usual, is uh, Segola 4600. This is my special edition trophy truck, 1.2 XL. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get this job done. Perfect. So I'm gonna start at the bottom here and then follow all the way. All right.
All right, that's first coat done. I'm gonna give this about five to 10 minutes. Once it starts getting nice and sticky, I'll do a, a second coat. After clear coat, I am, I am extremely happy with that blend. That looks as good as I could have possibly done it. Yeah, I'm not upset about that at all. So uh, once I get my second coat, I'll get this through a bake cycle and then I'll bring you guys back in so you guys can check it out. All right, guys, that's it. This is not a bake cycle. This is all no dry. Uh, this one went rather smoothly. It doesn't always happen like that. Uh, some of these colors, man, they, from the factory, are all over the place. Prime example that everybody knows, 1G3, which is uh, from Toyota. That color is all over the place. PAU from Chrysler's terrible. ETH from Chrysler, we call that pretty shitty color because it's just, it's horrible. It's all over the map. It doesn't cover very well, hard to blend. This color ended up way better than I thought it was going to. I thought I was going to fight this a lot more than I did, uh, but I'm, I'm extremely happy with this. I'm gonna leave you guys with just some panning shots of this side. I'll also show you all the parts and everything that are in here for this job. Um, and as far as future content, future videos, I promise you guys that I'm going to get better at creating these long format videos for YouTube and bringing you guys some more content like this that shows that even though I do this for a living, that it can still be challenging. So if you guys end up fighting something, don't feel bad about it because everybody else does too. There, there is not a single painter on this planet that everything goes perfect for. It's, there's struggles just like this in every single shop. So until next time, guys, I, I'll catch you on the next one.